Hello, and welcome to the Creative Mojo podcast. This is episode number 41, and uh, today is Sunday, October 29th. Um, I normally record on Saturdays, but uh, yeah, I didn't uh, didn't get a chance. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, so I'm recording today on Sunday. I hope to have this uploaded by the end of the day today. Um, this is my podcast about my uh, love of knitting and other uh, fiber sort of related crafty activities. And welcome to any new viewers who might be checking me out for the first time. I hope you'll enjoy the podcast and uh, come back and watch again. And uh, if you do enjoy it, uh, consider subscribing uh, in the little subscription button down below and giving a thumbs up to the uh, video. And uh, welcome back to all my returning viewers. It's uh, uh, really nice to get the chance to chat with you again. Uh, with you. Uh, chat at you is actually more accurate. I always find it funny when we podcasters say chat with you because uh, um, it's a it's a kind of a one-way thing on, on a video podcast. But um, not to say I don't get uh, great comments and feedback, back, feedback um, here on YouTube and in the Ravelry group and stuff, and I really enjoy that. And speaking of which, we have a Ravelry group. Uh, it's called Creative Mojo. You can find it by searching under the Groups tab. And uh, you can find me as Auntie Jo on Ravelry and as Auntie Jo12 on Instagram if you're interested in following me about. And um, yeah, I think that's all the, I think that's all the, the biz. Um, <clears throat> So let's dive into it today. I think today might be a slightly shorter episode. I have, I've only been working on a few things, been a, a bit more monogamous than um, usual, which is great for, um, I do have two FOs to show you, um, but not as much content in general. Um, and as I said, I didn't record yesterday because uh, I, I went to the ballet yesterday afternoon with my mother, which was really nice. I, um, a friend of mine was performing with the uh, Alberta Ballet and they're doing uh, Dangerous Liaisons was, was the ballet we saw and um, uh, I got offered some tickets so I took my mother and we went to the matinee yesterday and had a wonderful time I really enjoyed that uh, it's been a long time since I, I went and saw the ballet and uh, I, I really enjoy dance but more often I see sort of modern dance or jazz dance and and it had been a number of years since I'd seen the ballet and I forgot how much I enjoyed it and how beautiful ballet can be. Um, <clears throat> so that was really nice, but that sort of took up between that and, you know, a few things like necessary evils like laundry and things like that. That took up my Saturday. So, but um, luckily uh, uh, my husband is actually out uh, working today, Sunday, so I have the ability to record today. So I'm pleased with that because I'm going to get an episode up. It's been a few weeks since my last one, which was the episode I filmed while we were out on Hornby Island. Um, mostly talking about Knit City. If you haven't seen that yet, check it out. Uh, I show you the yarns I got at Knit City and talk about my experience there and what a wonderful time I had. And that seems a long time in the past now. <laughs> it was a couple of weeks ago, but um, things have been crazy busy uh, for me with work. We've had a lot of... Um, uh, one of the things that uh, I've been doing lately um, with my job is a lot of grant applications. Um, Nonprofit organizations uh, rely on a lot of uh, grants from different levels of public funding um, here in Canada. It's federal funding, provincial funding, and civic funding. You could get money from all three levels. But there's a lot of, of hoops to jump through to apply for that funding every year. And there are, um, sorry if you hear a little weird noise there in the background. It's extremely windy outside today. And uh, it always makes my house. Uh, vibrate it makes things in my house vibrate a little when it's when it's this windy it's a it's a lovely sunny day but uh high winds anyway um yeah it, there's a lot of applications and a lot of reports and a, a lot of statistics you have to gather and all that kind of stuff that goes into granting for nonprofit organizations and i've been kind of down the rabbit hole with that uh, doing we had uh one due last week one that's due tuesday that i just finished up we're 90% finished up on Friday um, to get submitted on Tuesday. I have a few more things to do on that tomorrow and then one more up after that. So I've been super busy with that kind of stuff and, and uh, um, that's been occupying a lot of my time. But <clears throat> anyway, let me, let's just dive right into it and uh, show you a little bit about what I've been working on in the uh, crafting world. 
So the first thing I have to, first finished object I have to show you is a finished pair of socks. I showed these on my uh, last video as a work in progress. Um, these were socks that I was working on during, um, that I cast on just before I went uh, to Knit City at the beginning, at the end of September, beginning of October, and I was working on these through a lot of our trip, and I finished them up um, just before the end of the trip, just after, I think just after I recorded my last video. And I love these socks. I just love them. They're um, uh, vanilla socks. They're for me. Um, they're my usual uh, vanilla sock recipe, 64 stitches. I do my socks uh, cuff down. Um, I did, did a standard heel flap and gusset, as you can see there. Um, <clears throat> the yarn that I used for these is um, junk yarn in the Drew colorway. That's so pretty. It's a little bit more yellow in real life than it's showing up. The yellow's washing out a little bit on the video, but um, <clears throat> and I did a, a contrasting heel flap and toe with a little mini I got at uh, Knit City of um, from Seawall Fibers. Uh, again, this is just slightly more orange in real life. It's showing up, uh, blowing out a tiny bit. The lighting's. Not great, as always. Um, I really need to sort of look into investing in some some decent actual photography type of lights. But anyway, these are done. I really love them. They're going to go into my box of socks, which very excitingly takes me to uh, 12 pairs right there. So my box of socks for 2017 is finished. I think probably there'll be another two at least pairs in there before the end of the year. Um, <clears throat> I really need to get to some Christmas knitting. I haven't I'm really bad. I usually start Christmas knitting in August or September. I haven't done any yet, so I don't know how many members of my family are going to get their uh, usual knitted gifts this year, which they may be a little disappointed in, but it is what it is, right? So, because um, I've just been doing more knitting for myself. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I'm going to get start on in that, so I don't know how many more pairs of socks will go into the box of socks for myself, but I'm really excited that I've got to 12. And yeah, I really like these and I'm looking forward to, to getting to wear them sometime soon. So that's my first FO. The second one is something I showed you um, that I had just started when I did my last video uh, that I recorded on Hornby Island. And uh, this is uh, with yarn I bought at Knit City. And it is the Void Shawl by Melanie Berg. No, yes, Melanie Berg. I always want to see Mar say Martina Bem, and that's because it's an M and a B name, <laughs> but it's Melanie Berg. Um, and this is done, and I love this, and I really enjoyed knitting this. It's huge, as you can see. It hasn't been blocked yet. I haven't gotten around to blocking it. I um, All my sort of available blocking space in the house was taken up in the last little while with um, washing some sweaters and, and getting them ready for colder temperatures that are coming, and then I did a big wash of a lot of hand-knit socks and stuff like that. So this, this has yet to get blocked. Um, so it's going to actually, I think, grow a little bit more, um, but it's nice and big. It's very dense. It's extremely squishy. The yarn that I knit this out of is um, Sweet Fibers. This is the her tag that I picked up at, as I said, at Knit City. It's a Merino Twisted wor Merino Twist Worsted Weight, um, 200 yards per per ball, and it's 100% superwash wool. And um, I used more yarn. I don't know why, but I used more yarn than the pattern called for. I believe it called for 620 yards or something like that. I bought four skeins, which was 800 yards, and this is all I had left out of four skeins, is these three tiny little balls. So I used probably 700, I bet you 725 to 750 yards. Um, I don't know why I knit it exactly to pattern in terms of the number of repeats and stuff. Um, probably just my gauge was a little maybe denser. I knit this on a 4.5 millimeter needle, um, except for the bind off, which calls you to you do an I cord, put a little I cord bind off on there, and that calls for a five. Um, but all the rest of it was knit on a 4.5, which is I believe what else also called for the pattern. I didn't do a gauge swatch, which I never do for shawls, but. Um, I am glad I had that for a skein. Otherwise, it would I would have had to make it smaller. Anyway, it is so pretty. It, it's really hard to capture 
this color um, because <clears throat> let me see if I can if it captures it that captures it a little better in the ball there um, it's it, it's all of these different shades of lilac um, there's a sort of there's pinkier shades and bluer or blue bluey gray uh, shades it's a it's a lightly variegated um, and you can you can sort of see it really plays with the light. I, what I love about this color, what I loved when I saw it right from the beginning, uh, is that it kind of glows with the different um, um, shades that are in there because it, it picks up the light so beautifully. And this is going to be a great shawl for winter. It's it's like I said, so dense and squishy, and it's going to be super super warm. I'm really looking forward to wearing it when it gets, unfortunately, inevitably very cold and, and wintry here um, for a number of months. <clears throat> the only thing I'm not crazy, it's always my complaint with, with top-down shawls that start with the garter stitch tab cast on, is the little bump that you get there. But no one will see that when you're wearing it because that's across the back. And yeah, so that's my um, my finished void shawl. I don't know what else to tell you particularly about this, except as I said, I enjoyed work, uh, knitting on it. It was, uh, a, the pattern is a pleasure. It's um, it's a pretty easy repeat. I found it actually easy after one or two of the repeats. And of course, at the beginning, the repeats are very short, which is great. So when you're in this, you know, you start from up here. So when you're in this part, you're not, it's not very many stitches on the needle. So I found those few first probably two repeats that were shorter uh, was plenty enough for me to memorize the pattern. So I only, I, I only, I, I kind of had to reference it at the beginning of each row just to double check that I was doing the right thing for the next row and then I just could fly through it and I, it's not a, for me anyway it wasn't the kind of pattern that you have to keep your eyes glued to all the time um, um, the rows do get very very long at the end like by the time you get to the garter stitch uh, border there there were 404 404, 414, I can't remember which, 404, I think, stitches on the needle, and uh, those rows were very, very long, took a really long time. So it took me about two days just to complete the, the final two evenings of knitting, because um, it would take me a good 20 or 25 minutes to get through per row, and I was just working on it at home in the evenings a little bit while watching TV, but <clears throat> I knitted on this pretty pretty much monogamously from the um i i really sort of deep dived i started it on hornby island i got a little bit done and then i worked on it a lot in the car on the drive home from bc and that's a um well it is split into two parts of drive because we drove from hornby island to Kelowna and spent uh, where our son and daughter-in-law and grandchildren live and spent a lovely two days with them had thanksgiving dinner with them and that was really so much fun. Um, we we had such a good time with it. Our grandchildren, um, there are five and three and 19 months, I think Lucas is now. And um, yeah, that was just terrific. We sat down to dinner and the uh, um, his mom asked the five-year-old, uh, Charlie, the oldest of the three, what he was grateful for, for what he gave thanks for for Thanksgiving and he came up with all kinds of the most amazing things. Um, the one I think I liked the best was uh, he said, I'm grateful for people because without people you'd be all alone. And I thought that was great wisdom from a five-year-old and a good thing to be grateful for. Anyway, um, so I worked on this a bit between Hornby Island and Kelowna and then I worked on it a lot from Kelowna home which was about a seven hour drive so I got lots done in the car and then I just kept kept at it and I and I worked on it exclusively until it was done and I'm really happy about it and yeah I I recommend it as a lovely pattern um I don't have it's one of it's only the second worsted weight shawl that I've knit for myself and as I said if you live in a colder climate where where that's gonna it's gonna be nice to have something thick and, and squishy and and cozy to wrap up in the colder months then it's a good one to do so those are my two whips, uh, or sorry, those are my two finished objects, I should say. And then um, the the works in progress, I finished that shawl about oh, just over a week, about a week ago, I guess, just just over a week ago. 
And I picked up my um, socks that I, again, um, <clears throat> this is also yarn that I uh, got at Knit City. It's kind of fun. I don't normally, when I buy yarn from um, knitting events that I go to, that yarn often sits in my stash for a while. And it was really nice to actually dive into that yarn while I was, while I was, while it was new. And, you know, I think you're always sort of most excited about new yarns when you first get your hands on them and can't wait. But then from, if you're like me, I always have other projects on the go. And so those yarns go into my stash and then they end up sitting in there for a while. So it's been kind of fun to, to really kind of work on some of, with some of those new yarns right away. And these are socks that, um, I started right after I finished these ones. Um, and I picked this yarn up again uh, in at Knit City. This is Black Cat Fibers. Uh, no, Black Cat Custom Yarns. She's a, a dyer out of Kimberly, BC. And uh, I love, this is really nice yarn. I picked up three skeins I showed on my last podcast of, of her yarn. And I'm looking forward to doing another pair of socks with them. It's, it's a nice densey, <laughs> densey. Yeah, that's a new word I just made up. It's a nice, dense, squishy. That's what I was going for. If you combine dense and squishy, you can say densey. <laughs> this is a, uh, but it's a nice, dense, squishy um, sock yarn, and uh, it's going to be really cozy to wear. It's nice and soft. And uh, it's, this is her tag. Um, I, yeah, it's an 80-20, 80% 80 uh, superwash merino, 20% nylon. <clears throat> and the color, uh, this color is Choco Mint, and I'm knitting these not only for my November socks for the Grocery Girls year-long sock cal, but, uh, not November, sorry, October, um, but I'm also knitting them for um, Candace of the pin, who's transitory on the, on the internet, uh, her, who has the pin feathers and podcast, uh, pin feathers and pearls, ugh, I'm talking too fast, get my words muddled. The Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast, who's a fellow Calgary podcaster. Um, she has a, a, a mint along, she's calling it her favorite color, I think. And so you can, it's anything that's got mint color. And as you can see, this is a beautiful mint color, choco mint, mint and, and brown and a little bits of the um, kind of tealy blue in there. The um, toe and the cuff I did in a it's actually a gray. It's coming up a little browner in this light, but it's a gray mini. Again, this is another one of the minis I picked up from the set, a uh, little mini set that I got from Seawall Fibers at <coughs> Knit City. So all this yarn is Knit City yarn. First sock is done, and I'm almost done the second sock. Here is the second sock. Again, top down or cuff down as I normally do. Um, all I have left to do here, I'm ready to put in the toe on the second sock. So. So I'll get finished today for sure. Um, this afternoon after I finish this probably while I'm waiting for stuff to upload. Um, yeah, what else? Oh, so one funny thing about this pair of socks. I don't know how I... So again, normally my normal um, sort of sock recipe for myself is 64 stitches. I like to do a two by two cuff. Uh, 64 stitches down uh, and heel flap and stuff. Somehow, without noticing, I only cast on 62 stitches for this, and I knit all the way through to the heel flap, and at the heel, and I knit the heel flap, and everything was all good, and I got to the heel turn, and the numbers weren't adding up. Um, if you've done this kind of short row heel turn before, you know you knit across a certain number. Um, I I normally I I do I can do all of this just with the math in my head because I've knit so many pairs of socks, I don't need to follow a pattern. But I know basically that as I knit across, I need to have have the same number of stitches on either side as I begin the short rows. And normally for me, that's like, I, it's like slip one, knit 18, and, that leave, and then you do a slip, slip, knit, knit one, and then you turn and work back, and that normally leaves me 10 stitches on either side. And I got to that, and I didn't have 10 stitches. I was like, that's weird. So I counted again and realized that I had... 32 on the front part of the sock and th only 30 stitches on the back part. And like I left it as it is because there was no way at the end of the heel turn or at the beginning of the heel turn that I was going to rip back the whole sock and start over, especially because these need to be done in the next couple of days to qualify for the uh, grocery girls for my October socks. They need to be done and posted in that thread by the end of October, which is Tuesday. So 
I just left them as it is. I mean, they're for me. They're only two, two stitches less wide in the leg, which I don't, won't make a big deal. But I don't know how I didn't notice because as you see, I do a two by two rib. Well, here you will see there's no pearl in between those two uh, knit rows. Usually there's two pearl rows, two knit rows. And yes, that was right where a needle, where I switched needles. But you think I would have noticed, but I didn't. Anyway, so that was an interesting little adventure. But I said, almost done, ready to cut this yarn ball off and uh, add in my toe and those will get done today. And the other um, project that I have been working on a bit, I stopped working on this again for the last couple of days to get these socks off, but this will come back again tonight, probably once I finish the toe of that sock, is, this is a, part, a project that I uh, started uh, about a year ago, probably, and <clears throat> I haven't, and I talked about it on the on previous podcasts um, back probably around about this time that last year, I can't remember exactly. Um, I'll have to go back and look and see, I don't remember, as I said, exactly when I started, but it was a while ago. Um, it's the Wake uh, pullover by Veronique Avery. Um, I'm knitting it out, which is a Brooklyn tweed pattern, I do believe. Um, I'm knitting it out of Beaver Slide Dry Goods in their two ply. It's a fingering. Some places it's called a fingering. I think on the tag it's referred to as a fingering, but I've also it's also listed. I think on Ravelry that it's listed as a sport. So it's a heavy fingering, I guess. Um, I had knit all of the back of it, and if you remember, if, you, if you're if you a long-time viewer and you have watched me talk about this sweater in the past, I actually knit almost all the back. It was too big. This pattern, row gauge, is really important. Um, and it was, it, I didn't like, it was going to be too long, I felt. So I ripped it all out and started all over again, went down to needle size. Um, so a lot of knitting went into the back, but that's the back of it. It was completed quite a while ago. Um, I love this project because I, I really love working with this yarn. That uh, I've got to get more of this, the Beaver Slide Dry Goods. It's a nice, it's a rustic yarn. Um, said it's a, it's a two ply. It's very, it's a woolen spun. Yes, it's a woolen spun. It's very lofty. Lots of air in it. Um, it's a merino. I don't know if it's even merino, but it's a. a wool nylon or no not nylon it's a wool and a little bit of mohair blend there's lots of um it's pretty soft for a sort of rustic yarn and there's lots of lanolin still in the wool so as you knit with it you can feel uh, it makes your hands soft it feels really nice i can this is going to be a good warm winter sweater um but i got through a bunch of this and then i got caught up in other projects and and it's been sitting in my little uh, basket basket here, uh, my Jenna Rose knitting basket, which I love. It's been sitting in here for, there for quite a while. It's been a while since I worked on it. I had started the front and then I'd set it aside. So I picked this up again after I finished the void shawl and I thought I'm going to make some headway on this because um, I really actually want to wear this this winter. So I've been working on the front and when I picked it back up, I was about there where the stitch marker is. And, ah, she goes this way, sorry. I had about that much done from the bottom to there. And I put on a bunch more on the front. Um, this, obviously, the sweaters knit in pieces and then seam together. Um, from the from other comments on Ravelry and project comments, there's quite a bit of finishing in this project. Uh, a lot of finishing work, a lot of sewing up and different little things you have to do for the finishing of it, which will be a... Um, a good exercise for me because I haven't done a ton of that and I don't love it. I mattress stitch is not my um, best uh, skill and I suspect I will I know I will get better at it doing this because I want to do a really nice job so um, I will take my time and do it right um, but obviously it's in pieces. It's an interesting construction. The front I guess you can see here gets wider as you go and the back, the bottom of the back, let's show this to you, um, gets narrower. So, so it's very wide across the bottom here because 
this is the bottom and part of the side and part of the front as well. It wraps around this way and it slants and it joins up with those cables. I'm not, I don't know if I explained this very well, but basically what you get in the front are those cables going like this up into the armpits and it's uh, seamed along the edges of those cables. So the back is coming at the bottom is coming around and attaching and then it goes like that. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I really, really like this project, and it's too bad that I got stalled on it for so long, but I'm really hoping to put some work into this over the next uh, week or two in the evenings and get at least the front done on it. I think then the sleeves will probably go pretty quick. Um, I'll probably slow... I, I made some pretty good... This was just a couple of nights knitting, but I sort of did... As I said, I was here, so I did all of that with those... Really kind of horseshoe cable. I think those are called horseshoe cables. Um, going up the sides, it goes actually pretty fast. It's mostly just stockinette, and then and those cables are really easy. There's um, it's a six, no, it's an eight stitch cable. So I have to use a cable needle. Normally I like to cable without a cable needle, but I don't do that for when you're moving four stitches around at a time. Um, but it still goes quite quickly. So obviously when I get up into more to the, where the armpit and then the neck shaping and sh shoulder shaping and all that, that will slow down a little bit because there's lots to do, uh, lots of different things to do. But right now it's just whipping along and I've got quite a ways to go on it still. So um, I think you do 12 repeats of this cable and I've got, one, two, three, four, I've got six. So I'm about halfway through the front. And um, the way this sweater is shaped, it's also a bit shorter in the front than it is in the back. And we're short rows across the bottom of the back, so it curves down like a bit like that, and it's a bit longer in the back. Anyway, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying work. I'm glad I pulled this out again, and uh, I hope to make some good progress on it. And I, as I said, it's Beaver Slide Dry Goods. Um, I have lots of it. I should have plenty of this yarn. I think I bought six skeins, and they were four, 400 yards a skein, so I think. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I highly recommend this. It's a, it's a really great alternative if you, if you like, um, Brooklyn Tweed, but find that a bit expensive. This is, uh, uh, a good alternative for the Brooklyn Tweed, uh, loft, which is the fingering weight. And also even their, their worsted weight would be good alternative for Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. Um, again, being a sort of rustic, uh, uh woolen spun yarn, um, but it's less expensive than... Um, Brooklyn Tweed and uh, it's interesting fact it comes from Montana Beaver Slide Dry Goods is in Montana but the yarn is milled here in Alberta at the mill uh, mill that is um, uh, at uh, Custom Woolen Mills um, which actually is a mill owned and run by the family of a good friend of mine my friend Esther so that's sort of cool too anyway so that's my other work in progress the other thing so that that's all my knitting for this week um for the last couple of weeks i say all but that that's not bad two pairs of socks a shawl and a sweater well, that's not bad um but the other thing i actually worked on last week most of last weekend my crafting time went to some sewing i finally got my sewing machine out again i'm really excited about that and i've been working on two more um dresses from the dress number one pattern. Sorry for the crinkling, but I'll show you what that pattern, that's the packaging that the pattern comes in. <clears throat> dress number one by 100 acts of sewing. And uh, I just, I love this pattern and I have a couple of other her of her patterns that I'm really looking forward to diving into because they are very simple. And for somebody who is not very experienced at sewing, it really, I find for me anyway, it really allows me to uh, sort of learn some some basic techniques and to sort of perf get better at those techniques and to really kind of play with how fabric, different kinds of fabrics work and stuff without getting um, all wrapped up in complicated pattern steps that, that or even mildly complicated pattern steps that confuse me and frustrate me and then it becomes all about that. Instead, this is a simple enough pattern that, for, that it actually can be about the fabric and the sewing which I love. So I made another version. I, I made a summer version um, in a, uh, I think it's called
called Poplin um, that I wore, that I've shown off and that I've worn that I, I made at the beginning of the summer, I believe. And I'm, uh, I made another version last weekend and started on a third one. So this one, I love this. And I feel like this is going to, I'm going to wear this a ton. I've already worn it once. Um, I wore it two days after I finished it. As you can see, it's out of, it's a denim version. And it's a nice, this is a nice lightweight um, drapey denim. Um, bled a little, I washed it obviously before I worked with it. But even after I washed it, it bled a little bit on my hands while I worked with it. So I'll need another wash or two to get the last of the dye out of it. But that's pretty common with darker denim. Um, got lovely pockets, as you can see. And so it's just a nice, simple denim pullover little dress with pockets. Super practical. We'll go with tons of things. Um, as I said, I wore it last Tuesday, I think. And I just wore it with a black uh, uh, long sleeve tee and black leggings. And it just looked super cute. And um, it's got my hair all over it already. And I did better at the, the, um, the biggest challenge for me on the first version was the um, um, bias so so you did so I did the same I, you do there are d different variations for how you do the seams I did French seams on the inside which I'm really pleased about and I think is really particularly with any fabric that frays it quite a bit and the denim does fray quite a bit I when I washed it before I worked with it um, there was quite a bit of fraying at the edges so French seams are a nice way to keep that all tidy and closed in, in inside and probably hopefully prevent too much in the way way of uh, holes from where the phrase or whatever so you can see they're very nice French seams and then uh, you do bias tape all around the armhole edging and around the neck and I'm on the first um, it, it, the pattern encourages you to make your own bias tape which I did on the first one uh, I didn't make it quite wide enough and I, it was a real struggle so I used I thought this time because what my objective in this one one of my objectives in this one was to get that bias tape to lay nice better so I decided to use commercial bias tape so that I wasn't that my problems weren't being um, increased by making my own so I just used a, a navy blue commercial bias tape and, I, and it sits much better. It's still, it's not bad. Like the first one, I found it wanted to do this, turn out quite a bit. This one now, I cut the neckline a little higher on it than on the other one, I cut a bit lower on the neckline. So that may have impacted it too, but I, I'm not sure. I think um, I just did it, I did a better job of attaching it. It worked better with the commercial bias tape um, and gave it a good pressing and it lies nice, pretty nice and flat. So. Like I said, uh, 100 acts of sewing, dress number one. Highly recommend this uh, her patterns if you're a beginning sewer and, and interested in just sort of simple garments. She's got two dress patterns, two shirts, a pair of pants, and a skirt. And they're all extremely simple. That Both the skirt and the pants, I believe, are uh, elastic waist. So um, you're not doing fitted waistbands even or anything. So it's a great way to kind of get into sewing and gather a little bit of confidence with with working with stuff with simple things so I finished that and then I cut out and I started on and I'm going to work on this again um this afternoon a bit a, a second one um a second winter one which I, I'm loving this this now this is a lightweight a very sort of lightweight flannel will be interesting to so I've got it all I've got it cut out and pinned together and that's as far as I got with it I'm ready to do the French seams on it and these patterns are great in terms of they they knit it pretty fast it took me about four hours um, to do everything on that except I think the I, I I would say all told from beginning to end of cutting it out to completely finishing it maybe was a five hour part five or six hour project for me and again and that's partly because I'm a new sewer and I'm not very fast if you're faster than that this could go even quicker. I split it up over two days last weekend just because I did a few hours and then I did some other stuff and whatever, and housework and boring things like that. And then I came back to this the next day and just finished the ham on it. I think it was all head left, maybe. Anyway, oh, ham and then the, and the pockets. Um, so this is my second one. Um, it will be interesting to see how this one works. I love 
the fabric in it. As you can see, it's just so pretty, so pretty. And I think, again, this will be really cute with just like black t-shirt and tights uh, if in the winter. But it, I'm not lining it. So there is the possibility that with this flannel that it's just going to stick to my black tights like crazy and be a challenge to wear. So we're going to see how that turns out. If, if it is really a problem, um, then I will probably, I might consider, uh, adding a lining into figuring out how to Frankenstein a lining into it. Um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, so it's a little bit of an experiment in terms of using flannel for a dress, but I just love this. Oh, these pins are just popping out. Anyway, um, yeah, I, it was really funny when I went, I went to the fabric store about two weeks ago to buy that denim and got so caught up in looking at the plaids and flannel or the plaids. This is a, a plaid and it's little chevrons, if you can see as well. Um, that I realized I really love plaids. <laughs> I could have bought a lot of like nice cotton um, plaid fabrics to make a bunch more of those in different colors of plaid and in sort of heavyweight cotton. It's like, you know, stuff that people would buy for school uniforms and things like that. But there was a huge range and all kinds of colors and I really liked it. So, but I'll, I'll finish this one first and then I may go. The other thing I want to do is do one in linen. I think it would be really nice in linen. And I haven't been able to find any nice linen in the fabric store. So we don't, I really wish that somebody in Calgary would open a good, nice uh, fabric store for garment sewing. There's a couple of really nice places for quilting, um, but they have predominantly, obviously, sort of quilting fabrics. So I wish somebody would open a really nice, fabric store in town that predominantly carried fabrics for, for garment sewing. Um, we just don't have that. Lots of other cities do. And we used to have that here. There were a couple of places, but they all kind of went by the wayside. So if you're from Calgary and you're looking for a new business, there's my suggestion. Anyway, that appears to be all of my content. I knew this was going to be a slightly shorter episode, but that's everything I have to show you today. And that's everything I have to talk about. Um, I can't think of anything else. So with that, I am going to say goodbye to you till my next episode and wish you happy knitting. Take care.